It's ten o'clock and time for the accidental show. Please welcome your host, James Campbell. Good morning. 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 It is Saturday morning, which can mean literally only one thing. It's time for the Accidental Show. Uh, my name is James Campbell. I am the host of the Accident. Well, I say the host. There's actually more than one host. We've got other hosts today. There's like there's there's many. Yeah, there's two. There's two hosts. And uh, welcome to the Accidental Show. Um, now today's show is we're sort of theming today's show around things that happen at school uh, because later on in the show we're going to be meeting Joe Nadin, um, and she wrote a series of books called The World's Worst Class, um, and amongst other things she's going to be telling is about the latest one which is called the world's worst class gets worse um and also some other world's worst classes as well look um jenny oh molly's got a um may, is it molly or mabel it's molly has got has got it there fantastic um so yes we're talking all sorts of school-based stories today we've also got rick rick and Perek, um illustrates the books of the world's worst class and loads of other stuff. So many things you can't remember uh, what some of the titles are called. Um, and uh, and also today in the news, we've got Jack Bakai. Uh, he's going to be telling us some very interesting stories. I'm not quite sure what they are, but I know that some of them involve pumpkins. Some of them involve a flute and one of them involves not being able to do a poo in space. So we're looking forward to that. Um, whenever whenever we talk about schools, I'm always reminded of the, um, the funniest thing that I ever saw at school. Um, um, and it was when I was in, it wasn't called year six, I don't know what it was called, but I was basically year six, it was in the last year of primary school. And one day, and it was basically the day I discovered irony. And until that, I'd never heard of irony. But then I found it. It was like around that same year, I discovered that you could put oil on salads, that that was a thing. Um, I think I also discovered um, that there were different types of pasta. Um, and I discovered irony. It was a big year for me, uh, my 10th year. And one day we were all sitting in the hall uh, having an assembly. I was at the back with the other oldest kids and we were singing the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Do you still do that one? Give me a nod and a wave if you still sing All Things Bright. It goes, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and what It's very lovely. And we were singing that. Um, and then a wasp flew through the window. Do you know a tiny wasp? Like one wasp, 300 children, can cause a bit of a panic. This little wasp started floating around the, uh, the heads of the little children at the front, the reception children. They weren't called reception. I don't know what they were called then. Why are they called reception now? Give me a wave if you're in reception. Is there a reception at your school? Why is it called reception? It's very confusing. There's a sign in every school car park I've ever been to uh, that says all visitors must report to reception. But the hours I have wasted going, hello, I'm here to report to you. Oh, are you Iggle Piggle? No, no, I'm not. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, so the reception children, somebody notices the wasp and goes, oh, it's a wasp, right? Panic starts spreading to the school. There's a wasp, there's a wasp, ah, there's a wasp. Ah! Eventually, one of the teachers, I remember his name was Mr. Fixit, and he goes, oh, oh, there's a wasp. Well, I will be in charge of the wasp. And he gets a rolled up newspaper and then starts wading through the children to try and kill the wasp. Because that's what you do with wasps, isn't it? You either kill it or scream or run away or all three things at the same time. Like, Any of those is fine. So the wasp is floating around. Mr. Fixit is wading through the children. Small children are going, please do not stand on me. You are a giant and I will squash easily. Just get out of my way. I must kill the wasp. So we end up in this lovely situation where half of the school is going, kill the wasp, sir, kill it. And the other half are going, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great. Kill the wasp, sir. All and small, all things like die and wonderful. The Lord God made them all. Kill the wasp. And that's when I discovered irony. It was a great day. Um, so anyway, uh, I think we should talk to Kate, who is our co-host today. Good morning, Kate. How are you? Um, you all right? Here on the Accidental Show, we like to have, rather than just me, we like to have a child as our co-host as well. Who are, you, You're in training, aren't you, Kate? You're like an apprentice television presenter. Um, how are you today? What have you been up to? Um, I've been asleep and then I Good. woke up and then I went on my phone and then I had breakfast and then I did this. OK, excellent. Thanks for that very thorough and detailed uh, inventory of your morning so far. Can I ask you, Kate, um, has anything funny ever happened to you at school? Yeah, well, 
I started high school um, and not like funny things haven't really happened, but there have certainly been some strange rumours. There was a few weeks ago, there was one about apparently there was a severed finger in the boys' toilet. A severed finger? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, all, all the boys came in the classroom at playtime and said that there was a severed finger in the toilet. I don't think that was true. A teacher said that there wasn't an actual severed finger. Someone had just trapped their finger in the door. Ah, oh, which is quite nasty, yeah. There are many differences between primary school and big school, aren't there? And one of the differences is you don't have those protective bits of plastic around the hinges of the door, so you can't put your fingers in it. So you're at high school now, you're going to take control of your own fingers. Take responsibility, <laughs> children. Like, ah, oh, but my fingers are stuck in the door. Have you noticed any other differences uh, between primary school and high school, Kate? I mean, everyone seems to be bigger than you. Yes. Mm-hmm. And... Yes. You have to go to different it's, places, don't you, all the time? Yeah, you have. You can't just stay in the same classroom. Although, yeah. um, so, have you yeah. got a map of where you have to be? I used to, but I don't need it anymore because. Ah, yeah. right. but, so like half a term, you've learned where everything is. That's fantastic. Yeah. Good stuff. Well done, Kate. Um, now we've got apologies from from Griff the sheep. Griff can't make it today. Um, he sent me a text message. I sent him a text message this morning saying, Griff, where are you? Um, and he replied, uh, what did he say? He said, um, he says, hi, James. I'm afraid I've been vomiting for two days and it slipped my mind. Just so unprofessional. Really sorry, dude. No, who calls me dude? Just, just Griff the sheep. Um, I then said, no problems, get better soon. And he said, I ate some undercooked duck. And it's since turned me inside out. <laughs> so who eats an undercooked duck? What what? Is that a is that a new special thing? He lives in London, so maybe it's like a posh thing. It's like, oh yes, we go out to the undercooked duck restaurant. Um and I've said I've suggested honey and salt in hot water will keep you alive, because that's the sort of person I've turned into. Um <laughs> and he says, I'm already dead. Um so uh, so there we go. So there's no griff today. So apologies from Griff the Sheep um for eating undercooked duck duck who does that but other stuff we've got on the show uh, is very exciting i'll tell you what we have got i'm very excited to find out who's the winner of last week's competition um, because what we do each week is uh, we either have kirsten o'brien uh, who shows us how to do some crafting or we have some sort of illustrator or artist who shows us how to draw something paint something create something along those lines this week it's going to be rick uh, but last week it was trudy esberger who is marvelous and she showed us how to make a book by folding a piece of paper and then cutting a bit in it and then turning it inside out and folding it and i i i didn't really understand it um lewis did we get many entries from from last week's competition have we got a show reel no how, how many how many entries did, did we get one hang on isabel's got one in her hand there is it isabel hannah's got one as well has he basically just taken everybody ophelia's got one as well oh my goodness hang on gwen's got gwen's down there as well Gwen's got one. So we've actually we can actually have a live competition now. Right. Everybody who's got one, hold it up to your screen now. So, OK, so Ophelia's made a beautiful book. Oh, my goodness. That's gorgeous. Look at that. That's gorgeous. I love that. Excellent. Let's look at Hannah's book. We found it. Well, hang on. This everybody's got one. They're just not sending. Even Stuart Pierce has got one, and he he hasn't. He ain't like missed a penalty in 1996. Isabel, let's look at yours. Could you hold yours up? Oh, that's very nice. Iana said, Iana, you were the one person that sent sent it in. Congratulations. Um, and then Stuart, but that's actually Malachi and uh, uh, and Isaac, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Um, Excellent. And Tom, Tom has created something. There are actually loads. Gwen, we, we haven't seen yours. Can you hold it closer to the camera, please, Gwen? Gwen's like, no. Is it just a piece of paper, Gwen? You're just like, I just happen to be holding a piece of paper. I, OK, fine. Um, excellent. Um, Lewis, I think you should decide. Oh, Kate, maybe Kate, could you decide who the winner is this week? Can I, can I give you some advice? I ironed one last week. Okay. Um, Hannah's 15, so she gets disqualified. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ophelia, 
I think uh, Tom's one of the co-hosts, so he's disqualified. I think I think we talk, I think we talk, it's either Isabel or Ophelia. I'm I'm leaning towards Ophelia. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say Ophelia. Yeah, excellent. We're going Ophelia. Ophelia, you've won the competition. Yay! So you have won. Who? Else? What was the what was the prize last week? We had uh, who did we have on the show last week? It was um, we. Oh, I know who we had. Uh, we had the wonderful, wonderful author Jonathan Mears is who we had on last week, and he very kindly um, said that he's. Um, Hang on, I've lost the screen. He's very kindly uh, said that he'll send a signed copy of his latest book, which was called Bats, something in Bats, wasn't it? Scaredy Bat, Scaredy Bat. So he's going to send a copy of Scaredy Bat uh, signed to you, Ophelia. Um, how wonderful is that? Um, people will sort that out for you. Also, we've got some other books lying around, which we'll, which we'll send you. Um, so congratulations, Ophelia. Well done for winning some lovely, lovely free books. Signed books by the author as well. Uh, now, this week, our prize, uh, hopefully, we haven't actually asked Joe, but maybe we can get a signed copy of The World's Worst Class um, Gets Worse. Um, but, Rick, how are you today? Let's talk to you for a little while. Thank you. Now. Yeah. We can indeed. We can indeed. Um, so uh, you're an illustrator, is that right? That's right. Yeah. OK. And what does that mean? What do you do? Um, basically, um, I, I just draw. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Good stuff. And do um, you. So is there a difference between being an illustrator and an artist? Um, it's a tough question. Uh, I don't think there is. I think I think they're both are the same. Um, no, I, I think they're, they're the same. I think they're the same. I think just just the names are different, um, because you're drawing, you're you're being creative, you're painting. Um, so I think it's all the same. It's just names that are given to us by um, society. I think. Excellent. So when um, Bloomsbury, who publish uh, the world's worst class, when they when they emailed you and said, "Rick, yeah. please can you do the cover and the insidey bits." Yeah. Uh, for um for for the latest world worth but when what 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 do you get do you get like a, a brief or a mission or do they just say draw what you like we love you how how does that work oh uh, basically they um they send me an email um with a, a brief um and they say okay we want the cover to look like this um with these characters um then i usually have to do some roughs um so it's usually some pencil drawings mm -hmm. um I don't have any with me here. I mean, there's some at the back here for another book. Yeah. You can see. Um, but I usually do some rough drawings. <clears throat> uh, then I send them back to them. Um, then I get some feedback. So they tell me what works, what doesn't work. Uh, then once it's all been signed off, once they say, okay, that works, they give me maybe like two or three weeks to do the final artwork for the cover. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the first book. So this is all in color. Um, so I had to ink it. Uh, with my dip pen and color it with some watercolors. Um, then for the insides, um, I usually get um, a brief. So I usually get like a PDF um, and um, I do all the roughs again, send them back, get some feedback, do corrections. Then they say, okay, you've got maybe a month or two to do the final work. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I use my uh, dip pen, which is here and some ink. Lovely to do the drawings and that's usually how it works marvelous okay well i was wondering if you could maybe teach us how to draw something today yeah um I, I've, I've got my notebook with me and i've got i've got an inky pen is it best to draw with a pen or a pencil what what do you prefer whatever you is good for you um, i usually use a pen um yeah. but pencil's fine pencil's cool okay okay so i'm not very modern or technical i've got cardboard and some paper so i think what we could first draw is maybe penelope potts who is this character there she looks really mm. cheeky and really yeah. naughty um so what we can do i can have it this way portrait so what i usually do first is the eyes so they're two small circles so let's do Eyes like that. Lovely. Um, then her nose is an upside down letter U. So that's usually in the middle. So 
like that. And two lines for nostrils. Oh, I've drawn my nose in the wrong place already. I've got like, I'm rubbish. <laughs> As long as it's not up here, that would look just really weird, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, then uh, we, we can do our ears. So just to the sides of the eyes, um, a letter C and another letter C, but a reverse letter C, mm -hmm. like that. Um, then we can draw her cheeks and her neck. So that's like that. Okay. Um, then I like to draw her hair, which is look just like um, as if someone's put a, a fruit bowl on your head, then got some scissors and cut across, then yeah. remove the fruit bowl. Um, you, you say it as if. I think my, my little brother, I think he, he had that every, every time he had the hair cut back in the 1980s. Remember yeah. that? That was done. I, I think, jo Joe, did you have that as well? The haircut, yeah. yeah. My mother yeah. literally put the bowl, which was used for fairy cakes and being sick in and for haircuts. It was one multi-purpose yellow bowl that we all used. We need to bring the hairstyle back in fashion, I think. Maybe we can both get it done. That'd be cool. <laughs> so what I do is draw a line across here, then to the sides like that. Then I draw the top of the bowl, which is usually round like this. And obviously her hair goes behind her ears. So there's a little bit of hairage. Is, that, is, is there such a word as hairage? There is now. There's <laughs> hairage. Hairage. Her, her, her suitiness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then some eyelashes. So three eyelashes. Yeah. I've accidentally drawn, accidentally drawn Darth Vader. I don't know how I managed to do this. <laughs> She's a bit like Darth Vader sometimes, I think. Um, then her mouth. So she's always got like a cheeky grin. So it's usually to the side. Like this. Like that. Very nice. So you're drawing it in pen, Rick. Yeah. Um, some people might say, ah, but what happens if I make a mistake? If you make a mistake, you can draw always draw it again. It's not a problem. And then some people yeah. might say, yeah, but ah, oh, then I'd have to start all over again. That'd be really annoying. And then I'd end up just like, just giving up. Or you, you've, you've, you've just drawn another character that you don't know existed. Ah, okay. So you're yeah. saying that there's no such thing as mistakes. Exactly. Really? There's no such thing as mistakes. There's, I think Bob Ross said, it, happy, happy mistakes. Ah, yeah, it's very nice. Happy mistakes. I think that I think that's what he said. Um, yeah. Was yeah, he? He said that. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Yeah, the, the painter with the the big afro and the the brush. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Happy mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so then you can draw her pupils. So I usually do like two dots here, but she doesn't look very menacing or naughty. So what mm. I usually give her is um, quite dangerous looking eyebrows. Oh, yes. It's amazing what eyebrows can do, isn't it? Yeah, the, they're very the expressive. The of the eyebrows suddenly makes it all different, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, then you can draw the insides of her ears. So you can just draw like a, a E. That makes e. Sense. e. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, then you can draw the strands of her hair. So I just draw lines just to make it easier because when I do the final artwork, I ink it with a, a wash. Um, okay. So you can just draw some lines here like this. All the way down. And if you want to be really cool, you can give us some colors. So you can draw collars and maybe some shoulders and they have yeah. Penelope Potts. Uh -huh. when you're, so when you're drawing school children, do you, do you tend to put them in school uniforms? Is that a, yes. a thing? Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, one of the, yeah, because it's based in school. Um, but it, some schools don't wear jumpers and some mm. do. Um, so when I was drawing the children for the worst class, um, some of them 
I think most of them don't wear jumpers because uh, if we have co-editions, some schools in different countries, they don't wear jumpers. They just have maybe a cardigan or a shirt or a polo shirt. Mm -hmm. So many of the children in worst class have just polo shirts or shirts. Yeah. Um, the the school that I'm currently working at, because I work in schools as well as, uh, as a teaching assistant, um, they have jumpers. Yeah. Um, because uh, they're year ones. I work in a year one class. Yeah. Um, they're all bonkers. They all wear jumpers and everything. And sometimes jumpers on the heads and stuff. And you know, it's, mm. it's all fun. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I think my mum used to used to knit my jumpers for for, for school. I mean, I go to lots of schools now, and there's uh, there's often what there's often one child in the school. Everybody's got like you know the green jumper with the logo, and then yeah. there's somebody that's got the knitted version. I I, I I I like the knitted version. Somebody said no, no. I bet it's usually maybe maybe it's granddad or grandpa I said no. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna knit you a school jumper. That's what I'm gonna do. It's a connoisseur oh, version. Fine. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Okay, so our couple. There's, 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 there's mine. I actually because oh, cool, yeah. I was talking and drawing at the same time. I drew a bowl, an actual bowl on a hair, basically like a mason, mason bowl on the top there. So uh, I think that was quite good. Uh, I might draw some vomity cake mix coming out of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine that could go wrong, wouldn't it? That could be an episode in the next book, Joe. You could have like be sick in the bowl and then, but and then, oh, oh no. No, that that would be that would be the worst thing ever. Marvelous, marvelous. Um, Kate, have you got any? Oh, I like I like what Kate's done. Fan, look at look at Kate's. It's always almost exactly the same as yours, Rick. How has she done that? It's amazing. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. Well that done, Kate. Really cool. Kate, do you have a question you'd like to ask Rick about illustrating and stuff, or anything you'd like to say? You'll have to unmute, Kate. So. I like drawing too, and I always find it really hard to draw hands. So how how good are you, how good are you at drawing hands? Oh, it's uh, going to be a draw off. Let's see who can do the best hands. Right, <laughs> not very good. They're, they're, they're probably the, one of the worst things I've ever invent, I've ever invented to draw. Um, <laughs> what I, what I say is what how I draw them um, is. So let's do a hand. So we have the, the, the wrist here. Um, so I usually do this rough first. So I do like a, I draw like a circle. Then from the circle, if you look at your hand here, it's, it's very similar. See, you've got like a circle there. Um, then you can draw your thumb. Then you can draw four bananas or four pea pods. Um, and then you have a hand. Yes. It's, um, it's about basically breaking down things into really simple shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and what I used to do when I was in art college and um, then A-levels is draw my own hands. So you could put them in a pose and you mm -hmm. could just draw it. And that really helps. Yes. Presumably you have to make sure it's not the hand that you hold the pen with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, um... <laughs> oh, it keeps moving. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's a very handy thing to know know how to draw hands. Yeah, it's very handy. Very nice. Lovely. Uh, Rick, I love that you mentioned there that you're also a teaching assistant. I think it's such yeah. an undervalued role, teaching assistants. I think they do wonderful, wonderful things. And uh, do you enjoy your position as a teaching assistant? Um, I, I love it. Yeah, um, I, I think I started in 2013 or 14. Um, I was working before as a bookseller. Then I got made redundant because borders shut down. Um, then I used to work um, at Love Film, the film uh, DVD rental website. Yeah. Um, then um, I left there because um, it got taken by Amazon and it got quite corporate and, and I, I didn't really like it. Um, and most of the staff would send their work, their children to me to do work experience because my mm -hmm. job was the coolest. And my job was to watch films and just check if they're OK. And yeah. Maybe do some Photoshop and that's it. I got paid for it, Very nice. um, but it was like eight hours a day. So I thought, you know, there's something better. And I really liked working with children and I thought it would help with my writing. Mm -hmm. um, so I left uh, and I, I've been working in year one, year five, year six, year four. Um, and I love it. It's just so rewarding. It's, it's one of the best jobs you could ever do. And, and I, I've, I've, I've experienced lots of vomits and nose mm -hmm. bogies in my time. And it's been, um, yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah. helped with, it's helped with the worst class in the world, basically. 
<laughs> Indeed. Um, now, also, do you do you celebrate Diwali? Um, I do. Yeah. Excellent. And because that, is that now? I've, I've lost track slightly. Is 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 it a, is it a, a, a is it a particular day or is it a whole week of um, things? What, what is it? Tell us about Diwali. Um, so Diwali is a celebration of light um, oh, and over um, uh, good over evil. Um, and I think today, yesterday was the uh, the New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it lasts for another, I think, two or three days. I, I'm really bad at this kind of stuff. Um, but basically, um, it's it's a story of how Rama and Sita, um, who, who's, a, who's a prince, um, and they were banished by their father to the forest. Um, and um, whilst in the forest, um, Rama's wife, Sita, um, she was kidnapped by the demon king, Ravna, who has ten heads. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, so Rama had to seek counsel and help, and he found help um, through the um, the monkey god, uh, the monkey king um, Hanuman. And um, then they had a battle, and they got Sita back. And um, on their way back to go to India, because apparently this a battle took place in uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, people put little uh, tea lights on the roads, so um, Rama and Sita could see the way to the um, kingdom. Mm. Um, so that's why um, you see lots of tea lights. Um, and it also brings in the goddess of wealth. Um, but it's, it's, it's the festival of, a festival to celebrate good over evil, light over darkness. Wonderful, wonderful. I saw I, there's a thing I saw online. There's a, an amazing picture of the monkey, monkey king. Yeah. And, he's, and he's sort of opening out his chest to show yes. that Rama and Sita are inside. It's like, yeah. it's good. It, in some ways, it's terrifying. Yeah. Way, it's like, look, well, they live here in my heart. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, Rama told uh, Hanuman that, um, you know, I can give you whatever superpowers you want, whatever treasures you want. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, so Rama gave him, uh, um, I think it was a necklace. Um, I looked at it and he said, this is nothing because it's got nothing. It hasn't got your name on it. Then um, I think it was one of um, uh, Rama's brothers told him, well, you know, Hanuman, um, what, uh, can you can you do anything about that? And he, he opened up his heart and in every mm-hmm. sinew in his body, it was the name of Ram. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, I love you and I devote all my goodness towards you and you live in me and everything in my body is written with your name. So the legend goes that wherever Rama's name is chanted, um, the monkey god is always there. And he's apparently, he's apparently one of eight eternal, immortal um, beings still on earth, um, somewhere on earth. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very cool. It's very interesting. Wonderful. Love it. I love it. In the chat, Ayana has, uh, has, said, has said truth over ignorance, which I assume refers to Diwali, which is absolutely wonderful. Yes. But look, everybody, look at the time. The time is 10.30. And now the news. Uh, Jack, how are you this morning? I am very well, especially after that intro, James. I'm ready to go. So how's uh, what's going on in the news today? Oh, all kinds of things are going on in the news today, James. We've got a lot. Uh, long time no see, everyone. I hope you all had a splendid Halloween and bonfire night. I've got some fireworks behind me because nothing really gets me in the mood for celebration more than a still image of fireworks the day after bonfire night. Um, <laughs> I've been working hard to gather the strangest news stories from the last week. Here they are. Firstly, a bit of pumpkin related news to close out the spooky season. A man from Wisconsin in America has grown the heaviest pumpkin in the country at 2,520 pounds. Oh, I'm echoing. But it won't be winning any awards because it's been disqualified from the competition. James, what do you reckon that is? Well, first of all, I'm just, I'm reeling. I'm reeling that it's uh, two and a half thousand. That's like the weight of a car. It's mm. massive. That's two and a half tons. So that's, I mean, I, I've, I've grown some pretty big pumpkins. That's about, so it was disqualified. Was it the wrong colour? <laughs> no, it was not. It was the, the, the right shade of orange. Uh. It was, in fact, because there was a crack in it. Oh. There was a crack, a fingernail-sized crack um, because of the awkward way it grew, and that disqualified it immediately from the competition. Uh, it would have been worth $20,000. Um, but the, the grower said it happens. There's no crying in pumpkin growing. So <laughs> it's an intense game. Kate, do you want to join in with the news? Kate, Kate also had a theory as to why it might have been disqualified. Um, oh. I thought it because it wasn't a pumpkin, it was a squash. 
Oh, that <laughs> deception. That would have been incredible. Yeah, it was actually a ju- well. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I think they're all members of the uh, the Cucurbit family. Um, but oh, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if there is like a genetic difference between a pumpkin and a squash. Maybe at some point we'll have somebody on the show who knows and cares about these things. What else is in the news, Jack? Uh, the second story today, uh, James, a man was down in his crawl space under his mother's house using a blowtorch to clear cobwebs and ended up setting it all on fire. Um, the man tried for an hour to put out the fire himself before calling the fire brigade and ended up causing $100,000 worth of damages. So <laughs> that's been wow. going on. What's a uh, crawl space? Is that, oh, because some houses are on stilts, aren't they? And you can get underneath the house. And yeah, it seems thing. to be more of an American thing. It always pops up in American TV shows and stuff like mm. that, domestic dramas and stuff. They're always under the house. There's an area, yeah. like a, it's full of full of dust and filth and spiders apparently and the best mm. way to yeah, get Australians rid of Australians so you... I, I have a, I have a friend who's from Australia who spent a while living under his sister's house oh my god um, so I think it is it is a thing yeah she was aware well, of that was she uh, maybe maybe not I don't know maybe it was a surprise <laughs> 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 maybe he was maybe he was playing hide and seek and it went wrong um, <laughs> so this guy this guy in America was 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 with a blowtorch trying to remove do not so what we've learned here is do not remove cobwebs with a blowtorch it's the no, wrong tool it's no wrong tool. highly fire in general is just a bad way to, to mm. a bad thing to use under the foundations of your house Absolutely. Um, what or your mother's there? house alternatively mm. <laughs> um and then there's been a man in canada uh, a lot of things going on in north america today uh he's been arrested by traffic police because he was aggressively playing a flute with both hands uh while driving um they originally thought he was using his mobile phone but then discovered that he was following along to a song on his ipod while playing the article did not specify what song it was i like to imagine it's some like metallica or you know Mm, down with the sickness or something yeah Yeah. yeah. but um but he was uh fluting along to that and uh and now he's in prison Um, (laughs) it's important to mention that the accidental show does not condone obviously any dangerous or criminal behavior unless it's absolutely necessary and or fun um (laughs) yeah finally Finally, some news about space. Uh, I like space myself. There's mm. a lot of stuff going on in space at the moment. A lot of people. There's a space. lot of it. It's a lot of space to, to do stuff in. <laughs> yeah, there is. There quite is a lot of space. Yeah, it's quite it's quite large. Um, the astronauts leaving the International Space Station this week. Uh, they it's everything's going horribly wrong for them, James. Honestly, they're What's that? so they're leaving. Uh, what? What? Why? Do they? What, is it just the end of their shift? I don't know. Yeah, just don't like it anymore. Because you know, space. It's all right for a space. bit. Space boring. Yeah. <laughs> seen it all um yeah, yeah they've uh, they're leaving this week because and they're, they're facing a bit of an unfortunate situation because their capsule that is meant to be taking them home has a broken toilet uh a, a, a tube became unglued and just fired we everywhere um <laughs> so they they now have to use uh nappies all the way home which is very glamorous um uh, and, and oh. uh, they'll be received as heroes well, uh, are the they nappies. wearing like baby size nappies or have they got special grown up size? Nappies? I like to imagine that they are just just baby uh-huh. nappies, but yeah. uh, I'm sure they are military grade nappies. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they are. They are. So they're going to be received, high-tech. received as heroes with sure. uh, with pots of pseudocreme. Staggering out of the rocket with yeah. their with their fouled nappies. <laughs> What's worse, actually, is that they've started growing chili peppers on the ISS to make space tacos, which I think was possibly oversight um because but chilies are famously unrelaxing to the bowel area um yeah. they've kind of they've dug their own graves on this one james honestly i think yeah so basically well, they've grown chilies in space space chilies eating yeah. chilies and then the toilets broke <laughs> it's just <laughs> all going wrong so you it's do not perfect want storm. space at all do you because um, uh, apollo 13 the story that that was turned into a film wasn't it with tom hanks where it was like, <laughs> well, maybe this uh this episode well of space history will also be immortalized oh, so. by Hollywood. It's like, oh my God, there's we everywhere. What are you <laughs> gonna do? I've eaten four chilies. I really need a poo. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Just open the window. Don't open the window. No, um, it's a great. I, I, yeah, I think, I think there's a whole screenplay there, Jack. I think you should write it and pitch I it. I will. I'll get right on that. That's marvelous. But that's the end of the news. <laughs> Um, marvellous. OK, it's now turn. Kate, are you ready to welcome our our, our big guest? I like our, our super duper author type guest who has sold um, 
just like millions and millions of books. Um, one of her books, Joe All Alone, was turned into um, a television programme, which was on CBBC. And then it uh, it won a BAFTA. A BAFTA is like won an award for it. Um, and she also finds the time to teach writing at Bath University. Um, there's their creative writing course. She's a doctor. She's an actual doctor of writing. And uh, at the moment, she's here to talk about uh, her series of books, The World's Worst Class. Welcome to The Accidental Show, Joanna Nadin. Yay! Thank you. Hello, Joe. How are you? Good morning. I'm I'm good. I'm awake now. I'm awake, so I will be able to say penguin, not pig in a minute. I know I made right. that mistake earlier. When we were talking earlier, I asked you what the story was about, and you said it was about when they kidnapped a pig penguin. But, <laughs> but yeah, you just, I was like, what do you mean a pig penguin? Is that half peg? peg, peg? I can't say it now. Half pe peg. A penguin pig. It's like an underwater pig. Um, no, it's not. So you're awake. That's good. Um, tell us about the book. Tell us about the world's worst class. It is. Well, there was the world's the worst class in the world, not the world's worst class, which I believe might be David Williams. So I'm definitely not David Williams, for which I am thankful. Um, I'm so sorry. Worst... <laughs> I've only been saying that for the entire show. Yes. I mean, yeah, and I yeah. haven't corrected you until now, but now I am correcting you in my teacher-like manner. Sorry. If, um, if, it's, if it's any help, I get the secret life of teachers all the no. time. It's not even a film. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. That's that's my. Um, I do this sort of thing all the time. So please accept my humble apologies. Yes, we we don't even mention the Walliams word on this show. No. Um, absolutely not. Um, so tell us about the books. It is the sequel to the worst class in the world. This is the worst class in the world gets worse. Um, in which they, uh, the worst class, I mean, they're, they're not the worst class, they're just a class of very lovely, very different kids um, who, for whom things go wrong a lot of the time. There is also quite a lot of sick in it. I've just been thinking that as we were talking about sick earlier. I write a lot about sick, despite actually, I'm, I'm something called emetophobic, so I'm scared of sick, I'm, I'm really oh. paranoid scared of it um and yet i like to write about maybe it's my therapy to write about sick um i can't remember if there is sick in this one but they end up being playground monitors for which they say so they're in charge of the playground the worst class are in charge of the playground and they have to um make sure no one is messing about basically it all goes horribly wrong it doesn't have sick it does have toilets in it though because they, they try to flush a lot of things down the toilet and find that many things are not flushable Presumably not including a severed finger from Kate. No severed fingers, but there is a magic wand and a PE kit that try to be flushed down the toilet. I see, I see. I, I visit lots of uh, lots of primary schools over the last twenty million years, and um, and and often there's, there's there's like there's always one class in the school where they say, oh, you know, you've got year two next. They're they're mad, um, isn't it? Is that um, is is the worst class like that? Are they just like the, the, the one class? It's the just school? that one class in which, yes, my daughter was in that class. They have a two class intake in reception, mm. reception year. We weren't called reception year. We were, I don't know what were we, we were called. It. We were just we were Miss Wolf's class. That was it. That was the yeah. first class in school. Yeah. Um, and there was one class, Brazil class, who was full of, it was full of all the September children. So they were very well behaved and did everything properly. And then my daughter who was born in August was in France class and that class was chaos, <laughs> absolute chaos. Um, and I'm glad she was in that class because I, I think they had a lot more fun actually than Brazil class did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what about when you were at school? Where did you go? Didn't you go to school in Saffron Walden in Essex? I did go to school in Saffron Walden in Essex. Oh, I marvelous. went to I was, there the, I was there the other day. I was there on Tuesday night. Um, uh, where did, I went out for dinner in. Um, where did we go? I can't remember what it was called. Uh, it'll come to me. It was a. It was a Turkish place on the main street opposite the Quaker Meeting House. That's where it went. I, that that was night. not there when I was growing up. I no. can, there were there were about two restaurants. Um, <laughs> no cinemas. No, nothing. Nothing exciting at all. Oh, oh well. Oh well. Now listen, I was wondering, could you give us a little reading from your book so those of us who haven't read it can get a little flavour of what it's all about, please? I shall. I'm going to read you a bit from the second story in the worst class in the world gets worse, um, and this is where they. They're looking around a zoo for the day and they're looking for sad looking animals because one of the class, Lionel Dawes, um, 
is convinced that zoos are very bad places and she wants to set the gloomy looking animals free, but they've not found any gloomy looking animals yet until they go to the penguin pool. And this is what happens when they go to the penguin pool. It's narrated by Stanley Bradshaw. He's the main, the main character. Manjit was right, because when we got to the penguin pool, most of the penguins were busy whooshing in and out of the water on a special slide, except for one, who definitely did look a bit gloomy, which Manjit said was probably because of all the others hogging the slide. And Lionel said, in fact, we should probably rescue it and release it into the wild. Manjit said, in fact, we could release it at school, e.g. into the newt pond. But Lionel said it would eat the newts, which was murder because of them having faces. Only Manjit said it was not, it was the circle of life, because Lionel is keen on the circle of life, but today she was not keen, which is when I said, instead of the pond, what about the broken slide instead, which is only half broken because of the time Manjit put some glue on it. It could have that slide all to itself, except at break time when the year threes use it as gang headquarters. And everyone agreed. Lionel said, what about the high security? Manjit said there wasn't any because penguins do not bite and also their fence is low because of not being able to fly. Harvey said, how do we fetch it? Manjit said he had another foolproof plan, which is that Harvey could just lean over and lure the gloomy penguin into his empty rucksack using some leftover food as bait. But Harvey said, in fact, he had eaten all his food, which is why his rucksack was empty. I had also eaten all my food. Manjit had also eaten all his food. Lionel had also eaten all her food, even though it was only seedy biscuits. Then Lionel was saying this was the worst trip ever again, when I remembered that Mr Morris still had 11 fish finger and pickle sandwiches left, and fish fingers were definitely something penguins might like, and so we could use those. And so everyone agreed. And I'm going to leave it there. And you can find out whether or not they lure the penguin out of the zoo if you read the whole story. Well, I hope they do. Otherwise, it won't be, it won't be a very good story, really, will it? I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, we tried to lure a penguin and then it, we didn't. So we just left. And then a grown up came in and said this was a bit silly. Uh, so we all went home. The end wouldn't, wouldn't really work for me as a story. Really though, work, would it? No. Um, you do have to get rid of the grown ups, don't you, to make an interesting story, I think. Often. You really do. They have to get rid of, in this one, they're having to get rid of Manjit's dad because he's, you know, when you have to bring parents with you on school trips because there aren't enough mm. grown ups to monitor you so Manjit's dad Mr Morris has come but Mr Morris is he is never doing anything he should be because he's too busy being an undiscovered genius which means asleep most of the time ah. so he luckily is asleep on a bench while they are up to no good very clever very clever and um uh, Kate's going to ask you some questions in a minute but um so the stories are all uh, told from the different points of view of different children in the class is that right they're all Stanley narrates them all so he's okay. sort of the background he actually doesn't ever get up to the worst things. It's Manjit, who's best friend, who's always mm -hmm. got the foolproof plans and the brilliant ideas. But we follow all of the children in the class all the time. Lovely, because I, I love the way that, that they all seem to have their different voice, don't they? So how, 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 how do you get that voice of a, of, a, of a child into the narration there? I, d I, f I oddly find it very easy. Um, I don't know if it's because I've never grown up properly or because I I also had well she's 18 now but when I started writing for this age group my daughter was around sort mm. of five or six and so I just I listened to her I've written down a lot of things that she says because they were so ridiculous and funny mm. um, and I like spending time with primary school age children because they are absolutely hilarious so it's a question of just listening yes. I think and do you, because I, I, I go to lots of schools still, and, and, my, my, and my, most of my children are still quite young, um, uh, although they're getting bigger. Um, but do, do you visit schools? Do you, do you have to spend time with the audience that you're writing for? I did until obviously what's happening, you know, now. Mm -hmm. I don't like to mention it because it's so boring. Um, so, but I'm going back to my first primary school this coming Friday, which I'm very, very excited about. So it'll be the first primary school live visit for two years I've been doing a couple of online ones Lovely. which is it's fine but it's not the same as being surrounded by children who want to ask you how much money you earn and if you watch EastEnders and things like that yes it's important that these things are, are put out there Kate yeah. do you have a question for Joanna please uh, yes um so Joe who is your favorite Joe apart from yourself <laughs> obviously it's a good my question. favorite 
That is a good question because there are a lot of Joes. And now I'm thinking, are they male Joes or female Joes? My favourite Joes in real life are two boys, Joe Stringfellow and Joe Bruton, who are the sons of two different friends of mine who Millie, my daughter, has grown up with. And they are very good Joes. They're good, solid, kind boys. So they are my favourite male Joes. Um, I don't know who my favourite female Joe would be, except for possibly um, there was an MP who you may have heard of called Joe Cox, who was killed, actually. And I used to work with her because I used to work in politics and she was a really good Joe. Lovely. Thank you. Um, yes. OK, so um, it's a good question. I like that. Kate, have you got any others? Um, uh, no. No, okay, fine. No, no is a perfectly acceptable answer there. Um, that's fine. Um, I wanted to ask you, Joe. Um, have you met Rick before? Have you do you, do you work with your illustrator? Do, do do you meet up together and sit and do you write and he draws? Do you do that? No, well, weirdly, we I met Rick yesterday for the first time in two years, I think, since we met before we did the books together, and mm -hmm. then we met yesterday, which was really really lovely. But no, we don't work together in that way I think we do we email each other a lot now and I send Rick I tell Rick what I'm going to be writing about so that he mm -hmm. can get a vague idea but I did have the luxury which I'd never had before when I wrote the book they did say who do you want to illustrate it and so I was able to go and stand in, in I went to the big foils bookshop on Charing Cross Road which is massive mm -hmm. and looked at the shelves and that's where, and I found Rickin's illustrations out on a table and I thought that's that's who I want. And thank goodness Rickin said yes, I was so pleased. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That's that's nice, that's really, really nice. And so, um, so you write the book first, is that right? Yeah. And then you send that to the publisher, um, who's Bloomsbury, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that's the same right. publishers I have. And then, so they then put together some sort of brief for Rickin, and then he draws some rough ones, sends them in. Do you get to look at the rough ones first? Yeah. They always send them to me, and they always say, do you have any comments? And my only comment is always, I love them. Yeah. I, I'm not, I don't have the insight that, I mean, they'll come up with very good things like, so-and-so can't be wearing this because they weren't wearing it on page something or other. I mean, these weird little, I don't take that, I just don't see things like that. I just I just laugh when I see them all and I'm always really, really happy. It's absolutely pointless sending them to me. I'm mm. just always pleased with the pictures. Yes, I always find when, when, I, when I see them that uh, I'm always amazed that they exist um i, I get uh, i get very excited by the whole thing i just think oh this is this is this is amazing yes um and i, I don't i mean I, I i can draw little bits um but i'm not good enough to to draw the illustrations from my own book by, no. by any stretch um so usually i'm just amazed that it's that it's happened really i'm like that how can did I you just, do that that's fantastic yeah can i just put i can't draw but look what rickon taught me to draw this morning i'm so chuffed <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to be, you know, now volunteering to do the pictures myself, but I'm very pleased with myself. I honestly, I've always thought I can't draw anything at all, bar goats for some reason, but now mm. I'm very pleased. Excellent. Kate? Um, yeah, I've just remembered a question. Um, so, a lot of people get, everyone gets their ideas in different places. Like, uh, like I get, I get, personally, I get my ideas on the toilet. Mm. But, so... Where, Joe, where do you get your ideas? Um, I get, I do not get them on the toilet. Don't think I spend a long enough time on the toilet to have an idea. Um, they tend to come to me when I'm walking um, or driving. So when I'm driving, I'll often have to put my phone on the dictate mode so that I can say things into it. But um, in terms of where I get them, I steal them, basically. I steal them from newspapers, from telly, from real life so the story I just read a bit from about taking a penguin home from the zoo it literally happened in in back in Suffolk back in the it would be in the 1970s um, my friend's dad was a teacher at a school in Suffolk and he took his class on a trip to London Zoo and they literally came home with a penguin on the bus and had to take it back and actually this is the second time I've put it in a book because I just think it's the best the best thing ever so that's that's gone in at least two books now if not three. Oh, fantastic just, just keep putting it in uh, until somebody <laughs> notices and goes hang on a moment 
Joe, all of your books have got this same story of, of kidnapping a penguin. Um, let's have a look. Um, let's, if I go into gallery mode so I can see. Everybody, could you hold up your pictures of um, Penelope? Was it Penelope? <laughs> Rick, Kim, what do you think of what's been drawn? Oh, some people have got some colour well, in there. They are really cool. I think... I, I think there's a lot of competition out there against me and I'm slightly worried. So yes. perhaps everyone can just, um, you know, get rid of all the drawings and um, save me, please. Nice. <laughs> there you are. Wow, the frame. That's really cool. I love it. I love it. Um, maybe cool. what you can also do, everybody, as well as because we don't want this to be a competition to see who can copy Rick the best. Uh, maybe you can draw your own. Um, yes. but like, so Kate's drawn another version with different hair there. Um, so, yeah, or maybe even draw oh, yeah. a picture of yourself or somebody at school. Maybe draw the person at school that you don't like or the person at school that you love the most. Or maybe you can draw a picture of your teacher um, and then send them in to us. So if you send them to accidentalshowcomp at gmail.com, uh, then Lewis will pick them up or and or post them on social media with the hashtag accidental show and we will pick them up. We will notice them when we're on social media. Uh, usually sitting on the toilet in space. Um, so, yes, and then we'll put them in the competition. So the prize for this week. Um, so, Joe, would you be able to send the winner um, a signed copy of the worst class in the world gets worse? Got the title I, right. Did you notice? Well done. Well <laughs> um, yes, I absolutely can. Either that Thank one you. or the next one if it comes out um, soon, because I hopefully will be getting copies of the worst class in the world dares you. So whichever one I happen to have, I will. So there's a new book. There's a third send... book. When yes, does that come out? The third one doesn't come out till January, but mm. I will hope we, you might be able to get a sneak preview copy if I have one in time. If not, I'll send you this one. Bless your heart. That'd be lovely. So that's a pretty special prize. So you might get a, a signed copy of the latest book before it's even in the shops. That's worth entering a competition for, isn't it? Um, Tom, have you got a question that you would like to ask Joe? So, you know how you also wrote Penny Dreadful? Yeah. Well, here's the question. What do you think would happen if Penny Dreadful and the world's worst class met? Because I can see some similarities in that they're both generally nice people who are just like, who just have bad things just happen around them. So I wonder what would happen if they met. I think... That's actually a fascinating idea. And they do have a lot in common. I do like writing about children for whom things go wrong, but they don't mean it to go wrong. I'm not a huge horrid Henry fan, I'm going to confess, because he's generally does it to be bad. And I don't think children do that. I think mean. I mean, my daughter, all sorts of awful things happened when she was around. They did some terrible, terrible things, but they never met, did them to be mean. They did them because they were experimenting and trying to find stuff out when my ceiling turned red because they'd thrown goop all over it and things like that or given each other haircuts. Or accidentally um, knocked a roll of loo roll straight into the loo. I've oh, done that twice. And who one has it done was that? Even at my house, so I just had to waltz on out there and say, Nope, wasn't me. Didn't do it. Don't even ask me. Do you know what? That's the worst thing about being a grown up is that there's no one else to fish things out of the toilet for you anymore. You have to do it yourself. <laughs> there we go. Maybe that could be in your next book, Joe. The worst thing about being a grown up. Uh, I think it's a great <laughs> title for a series of books. Um, thank you so much for coming uh, and uh, for your time being on the Accidental Show, Joe. It's really, really lovely to see you. Um, thank you also to all of our guests. Thank you very much to Rick. Um, thank you to everybody who is here. Thank you for Jack um, for doing the news for us. And uh, and thank you to everybody for being here and joining in and drawing your pictures. Look at Kate. Kate's amazing at drawings. Fantastic stuff coming in here. Wonderful. Next week on The Accidental Show, I said next week, um, we've got Blake Chapman is our special guest. She is a marine biologist and she specialises in sharks. And she lives in Brisbane, Australia. Um, when I wrote my book, The Funny Life of Sharks, um, I used one of her books, which is called Shark Attack, as a, as a reference book. Uh, we had her on The Accidental Show back in the summer spring somewhere I can't remember it was was it May April somewhere around there and she's absolutely fascinating it's amazing what she knows about sharks and what she's doing she actually goes out and swims with sharks she's amazing uh, we've also got Beth Walker um, who is a author and illustrator she's new to me so I can't tell you much about her um, but uh, what she does is wonderful so we're going to find
find out more about that. Um, Jeff's going to read the news and my daughter Daphne will be co-hosting. Daphne's not here today because she is poorly. In fact, there's lots of poorliness. So Griff's not here. Griff will be back next week, assuming the undercooked duck hasn't, um, you know, totally done for him. Um, so hopefully he'll be back next week. Um, so send in your competition entries. Um, it's been wonderful to have you and we shall see you all next week. And that's the end of the show. Bye. Sorry. Can I just say something quickly? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I can offer a drawing of the penguin. Oh, my goodness. That would be amazing. Thank as you a so prize much. As well. Fantastic. Wonderful. We will be in touch and uh, we'll get that off you. That's an amazing offer. Thank you so much. Bless you, bless you, bless you. And uh, happy Diwali, everybody, to celebrate it. And not just people sending things up. That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So that's the end of the Accidental Show. Goodbye. Goodbye.